Turn with me to 1 Samuel 8, verse 1. As we read this, I want you to see what God says. Because if you don't understand the move of God, we're going to miss something. And I'm going to say this, it only takes one person to sink a ship. It only takes a drop of oil to ruin gallons of water. And we've been so processed, I know I have. I was born in a religion of Methodism. I knew more church needs than the Bible. I was, I was ta taught things that were not true in the Bible. I believed things that were not about the Bible. Matter of fact, I thought church and ease was the Bible. The preachers that I had, they did their best to preach what they thought was the gospel. And my grandparents are Methodists. My great-grandparents are Methodists. My great-great-grandparents are Methodists. And I just had to say enough was enough. Because the only thing that does, the only thing organized religion does is that it puts us in a box and it shuts down our thinking. If those of you who came out of organized religion, sometimes even when taking sacrament, I've been so brainwashed that even when taking sacrament today, I have to say of some words that I was taught as a child. And it blocks us from moving into God because God will do things and if it don't line up with what's going on here religiously, we'll say, oh, that's not God. That we'll do things because we were taught. So today, we need to break out of the religious mindset. If we're going to see a move of God in this church, we need to break out of the religious mindset. Because that is the thing that's attacking us, the religious mindset. That was grilled in us. From day one. Now, how many of you grew up Catholic? Ra just raise your hand. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I, I was a Baptist, uh, Presbyterian. <laughs> I was all of it at one time. So that's the mindset that we we battle against. That's what we have to battle against. That mindset. And I see some of us breaking out of that mindset. I see some people raising their hands, standing up, but we got to break out of that because we'll see God do something and we'll say, oh, we see something happen that is of God and because of our mindset, we'll say, no, that's not God. Now let's go to the chapter. Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judge over Israel and the first son was Joel and the second son was Abibajab, and they were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in his way. They turned aside after dishonest gain. They took bribes. They perverted justice. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel uh, at Ram and said to him, Look, look, you are old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us all, all the nations. But the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, heed the voice of the people in all they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. They did not want God to reign over them. They wanted a man to reign over them. And that's what religion is. It's man's best idea. It's man's best idea, and, they, and then they teach it and they repackage it. Man's best idea is religion. And religion is not concerned with 
you getting forward in, in Christ. It's not concerned with you growing in Christ. Religion is concerned with you coming back next Sunday. So that you can be fed the same garbage we fed you the last Sunday. That's what they're concerned with. I don't know if you've ever been to this church and you go to uh, a church that you've been to. I, I went home and I went to our church. Man, I, I was just disgusted. I wanted to leave. I just could not wait to get out of there. Because the same people were doing the same thing and they were saying the same thing. It's all wrapped up in a pretty bow. Well, so what did these people do? They looked at what other people were doing. Mm. They looked at the other nation. Mm, that's a word right there. Sometimes we got to stop looking at other people and look at the Bible. We can't look at what other churches are doing. We got to look at what God is doing, what God is saying, what God is about. Because in this scripture right here, I believe I've, all the stuff that they did, all the stuff that Israel did before, I believe that all the while God was trying to bring in his idea, which is kingdom. Even back there in Mount Carmel, when he told them to, to um, sacrifice themselves, he told all Israel to come out in the mountain, and God spoke with them, and then they said, hey, get this guy right here, and Moses, and Moses, you go up to this, this Lord, and, and you tell him, and he, you speak for us. Because this God is too powerful for us. That's what they said. And now in this same time, when God has brought them out of all the battles, when they have rejected him, when, the, when they have turned their back on him, and he saved them time and time again, in this time in history, God desires to reign over them, but they want a king in this time. Even though the God did use this for his own glory, he did, and that's what God does in our lives. He's used things for us, the things that we did for our glory. The stuff that we got ourselves in that only he could get ourselves out. He used it for a testimony of what he's done. God's idea of uh, what, what this God is about, excuse me, thank you, is Jesus did not come to bring another religion to throw on the pile. He did not come for that. It says in he, uh, Isaiah 9, 6, that for unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. He didn't say a religion will be upon his shoulders, did he? No. A government. That means rule, authority, dominion was on his shoulder. And his name is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his religion. Did it say that in the text? No. On the increase of his government. I don't know if y'all are not looking at the news or looking at what's going on out there, but we need a new government. We need a new government because that government is not working. When, especially if you let a 12-year-old have a... I'm not even going to go that route. But all the things that they're doing out there, we need a new government. We need to be under another government. Because, see, if you're in the kingdom and you're under the government of God, what goes on outside in the regular government, it's not going to affect you because you're a part of a different government. It's called the kingdom of God. Because he said, didn't he say, a thousand going to fall at your right hand, ten thousand at your left hand, but it will not come near your dwelling? Because you're under another government. Not a religion. If you're on the religion, you're under the same government as everybody else. Jesus came to earth to reestablish the kingdom of heaven on earth and to, re and to reintroduce the culture of heaven and to return to man the character and the dominion of heaven over the earth. 
That's why they say, let your light shine. That light that is shining, that's your character. And that's the character of heaven. So wherever you go, you take the character of God. Now, the closer you get to the king, the more you shine like him, smell like him, act like him. That's what happens. I was with um, James, and we was trying to pay the light bill for the church. And me and him went to Fort, they sent us to 10 or 5, a lot of places to try to pay this one light bill. And, the, and the, we went to a place and like, oh my God, I was upset. I was angry because we had drove all over town just trying to pay a light bill. But I, we got to the last place and the lady told us that they can't step out yet. We had to go get a money order. And I said, what? Oh, come on. And then we got back in the car and James said, why are you doing that? What's wrong with you? You got a problem? He said, he told me that. He said, he said, he said, I, I never get upset because the closest I am to God, then I take on his character. God's not concerned. God's not worried. God's not upset. He's not. He is not. He laughs. You know, and God is not an old person that sits up in the sky. He's not that. See, that's what religion teaches us. I'm serious. I, I, I thought that a long time that God was this old guy. He sat up in heaven and he just watched what was going on. I thought that. Matter of fact, religion took me to a point where I never wanted to go. I, I, God, I, I was done with that for a long time until I read the Bible for myself and I saw the word government and his kingdom. Okay, this is something different than what we were taught. This is what it was about. Even Jesus' first message, Matthew 3, 2. I'm going to give it out the Amplified Version. Version. <laughs> Repent. Change your, change your inside, your old ways of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, I'm going to say something that, that, that's going to probably shake you up a bit. God, Jesus spoke born again one time, and he spoke it to one guy, Somewhere off by themselves, those two guys. He never preached born again uh, publicly. He always said, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like, the kingdom is like. But we got born again, born again. I mean, I, as a kid, I, I think we sat at the morning bench, right, Moretta? We sat at the morning bench all week just to try to get... Uh, 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 reborn and, and saved and, and set free because, you know, we couldn't get it like they said in the Bible. You know, we had to stay on the morning bench for days and days and days just to be born again. And old ladies come over and slap you and say, hey, be born again. All that is a form of religious acts. It hurt, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Then the old lady come, the oldest lady will come by and say, oh, he got it, he got it, he got it, he got it. Got it. All right, God, what do you think? I hope, God, get, let me get it so I can move. <laughs> oh. Now, I'm going to tell you, religion is a trap. It's a trap. It's a trap that we all can get trapped back into. It is a trap. And if we're not constantly going before God, being boldly to go before his presence, we'll get back into that trap. Well, because, see, if someone comes up here, like, let's say, um, a Tracy Stewart, who when I met her for the first time, I was a religious person. And I was like, this woman is crazy. If someone comes up here, and they're moving the gifts and the powers of God. 
and they say a word over your life that is true from God, and you think it's not, you'll get right back into that, to that religious box that, that, that Jesus died for you to get out of. Very easy to get back into that religious box. Even sometimes I'll be praying, and because they taught us these prayers, uh, uh, I, I'll find myself praying these prayers again. That's the religious trap. Even though I look at something in church and it doesn't quite fit what's going on in my religious mind, that's a religious trap. So even though you believe it or not, you're fighting religion all the time. That's why I'm glad the little kids come up here and they, they start swaying these flags all over the place because that kills religion. I'm glad they do that. Because the first time they did it, I was deterred. I was like, what the heck's going on? I got to talk to Pastor Cindy about this. All these kids up here, what's going on? I was deterred. But then I thought about it. If I was a kid and they would let me flag, and when I come to church, maybe church would have been a little bit more exciting for me. Yeah, so we got to fight that religious trap. Because we cannot allow it to get back in. Because sometimes it's immediate, sometimes it's long. So, so because the religious spirit is, 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 is like almost like an octopus where it just sticks to you and it blends in with everything. Because that's what a, a, some octopuses do. They blend in with everything. You won't even notice it because it's blended into you. You got to root it out. And this is how we root it out. It's in Mark 6, 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So we got to make up our mind today that we're going to serve the King Jesus and we're going to move when he say move. Or are we going to serve the same thing that, that everybody else is doing? Are we going to look around at every church and look at what they're doing and want to be like them? Because I believe God is going to call all of us out to do something that, that will freak us out and then we're going to have to fight the religious, the religion that we were built into. So we got to make up our mind right now. And after we make up our mind, then we begin to, 33, we got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it says all these things will be added unto us. We got to begin to seek. And they're seeking to understand the kingdom, this Bible. We got to seek to understand it. And seeking is aim for it, strive after it, and it's the everyday thing. Aim for it, strive after it, because it, it, it's our goal to understand how to live and how to work and how to be in the kingdom of God. Because we want to be in his government, not the government outside these doors. That's why even people are attracted to you because you're not a part of what's going on outside. So we got to allow that light that is in us, that God give us as we get closer to this king, like I said before, so it can shine, so we can come and introduce someone else to the king. And lastly, this is what, and this is God's end goal for us all. And it's found in uh, Revelations 1. Uh, five. This is who we are. First of all, before I even read this, how many of you ever asked God to wash you in the blood of Jesus and forgive your sins? Okay, that's everybody. Good. All right. That's everybody. This is his end goal even for us. To him who loves us and washes us from our sins in his blood, and he made us kings 
and priest to his God and Father, to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. We are made kings and priests. That's our end goal. Our end goal is the same goal that God gave us at the beginning, to have dominion. He said that. Oh, I'm good. let's make man in our own image, in our own likeness, and let us give him dominion over the earth. So in the beginning, it's dominion, and at the end, it's dominion. That's us, to be kings and priests of our Lord. That's who we are. Jesus has made us kings and priests of his father. Whoa. Not a religious person just sitting in the seat coming day after day. You have an assignment. You are a king and a priest of our Lord. So we got to get after it. It's our time to get after it. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. 